Yo! Video games. What up, dudes, and welcome back to the Yo! Video Games Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Andrew. And once again, thank you to all our generous patrons who've kept us going for over 400 episodes. Yeah, if you're interested in becoming a patron at any level, please check out patreon.com slash Podcast. Dude of the week is Tyler F. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate you. Thank you, Tyler, yes. Um, and, of course, check out our Patreon for side quest content. We uh, we had a little bit of a slump in it, but normally every week there's a, an extra episode for people, you know, in the 10 to any, anywhere from like 10 minutes up to an hour sometimes of just episodes that we were requested by patrons. So please check it out. Uh, last episode, we talked about um, continuing our what if series with a what if Xbox just never, just never yeah. Microsoft never entered the console, the console war. Um, and it, it seemed to intrigue people because people were kind of like, Oh, well there's no world where Xbox isn't in gaming. Yes. I do think that yeah. no matter what, Xbox would have entered gaming at some point, but had they not entered console gaming when they did, I don't know that they would have entered console gaming at all because today, and this is going to be a slightly spicy take, but uh, consoles don't matter. And because consoles are, well, they, they do matter. They're important. They're not growing. They are right. not a growing in that section of gaming. Yeah, I mean, Phil's been saying this straight up, and 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 um, every yeah, the, everyone. The Jim Ryan hasn't said it, but the guy before Jim Ryan at uh, Sony yeah. was straight up saying it. Uh, while while I think taking Jim Ryan to task for how he ran Sony, but he even said it. Um, Nintendo has never said it because Nintendo, it, it, they're in the console game, but they're sort of not fighting the same yeah and, and and again i go back to you know going back to like to what reggie said where it's like look everyone asks me about you know what do you think about your competitors i'm like my direct competitor is anyone's free time <laughs> right like which that's the correct way i don't know if that's necessarily how ncl you know all of nintendo felt but you know reggie i think had the right idea where it's just kind of like i can't sit here and worry about what sony or microsoft specifically is doing in relation to us i have to worry about what anyone's doing like if they have free time luxury time to to spend on doing anything for entertainment i need i need to fight everything that's not me <laughs> which so. is i mean it's it's accurate but also think about how insane that argument is it's a good argument it's a, it's a maximalist argument is what it is yeah of course it's like okay you have free moment i want you to want to play my thing <clears throat> right i don't want you on your phone i don't want you you know, going to the movies or whatever. Like, I want you on my, I want you playing my Nintendo. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's crazy, but yeah. It, but here's the thing. I, I think just to preface a little bit of this is that if you, if you remember and you were around, um, the mid 90s was wild because everyone was throwing their hat into the gaming ring. And yeah, it started yeah. in the, it started in the early 90s where a bunch of companies announced they were going to do it. And then like they get to the mid 90s and companies are doing it. Right. So, um, uh, Trip Hawkins and 3DO company. He he's gonna make a console that doesn't have a specific manufacturer. He sells the guts. He sells it to Magnavox and he sells it to Panasonic. <clears throat> um, Philips jumps in with their CDI, where it's not really a game console, but it is a game console. But it's also an interactive, you know, blah blah blah, whatever the hell. Atari jumps back in. Sony makes a deal with Nintendo, and then then you know they get the, Nintendo backstabs them, and with trying to like you know cut a deal with Philips. At the same time, they're trying to build a thing with Sony. So uh, you know there was the new on the if if you you know like seeing a little further ahead, but like anyways, point is is that the mid nineties was this wild time where people like video games proved themselves. Where okay, Nintendo resurrects the industry in the mid to late eighties. Sega dips their toe and technically NEC does as well with the turbo, but it really doesn't find any foothold in America. Um, same deal with kind of like Neo Geo that also had, you know, Neo Geo and, and Neo Geo CD, but um, Neo Geo was, uh, it was real big with like, like younger boomers. I don't know why I know 
I know of younger younger boomers and I think it's, I think it's the arcade men I think it's the arcade mentality. It's sort of the fact that they were around for Pong and they know what an arcade is. And it's like you are right. You are buying the arcade at home. You're not buying a gimped version of an arcade game. You're buying the arcade game. Um, that actually, so, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, and, and status. So. So anyways, yeah, like, so Nintendo revives the industry. Sega comes in and they come out guns blazing, right? And they eventually get Sonic in there in 91 and it really starts to paradigm shift a little bit. So not only is gaming back and not fizzling out like right away, like it did, gaming's starting to boom. And like, even in Sega, even Sega was able to take down the mighty Nintendo for a couple seasons. Um so everyone jumps in like, okay, gaming's the hot new ticket. It becomes like the hot ticket item. Yeah. So everyone's jumping in and doing all this jazz. And it's funny because besides everyone besides Sony f- just fizzles real bad. And the interesting thing to me is that I feel like Microsoft is the last remnant of that sort of boom rush towards gaming. And I don't know, you know, I don't I don't think I'm I'm not saying Microsoft had these these plans, you know, to to jump in because I mean the thing is Apple did, Apple Pippin, which was a a Bandai product in Japan, but there was the Apple Pippin. I think Microsoft kind of sat there, waited, watched everyone stumble over themselves and then saw Sony do really well. And I think they're they're probably mindset and, and and there is whole books about how the xbox got going but yeah. the whole mindset is basically like i think microsoft played a little bit of a little wait and see on it because obviously they they were doing microsoft was doing very well in the mid 90s with windows 95 and windows 98 oh they were I, doing they were murdering it um <laughs> yeah. they were a juggernaut to the point when they announced the xbox everyone just assumed they went um it was literally a foregone conclusion at the time i remember yeah and, this and is something it, microsoft ha- has a strategy by the way that is a proven strategy in tech anyway it's it's not the first guy to do it it's the first guy to get it right and so they often will wait mm-hmm. the bigger companies will wait until a startup nowadays it's a startup or another company takes the risk and they go mm-hmm. oh that worked and then they'll they'll just dominate the market because they yeah. have money to do loss leading. And that's what Microsoft did. <clears throat> and, and, and they knew right away that it wasn't going to be a, a very profitable venture at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like they knew it was going to be a money sink. Their idea was that in 10 years, if it's not turning around, then we're going to dump it. That was the original plan for Xbox. Now, the interesting thing about Xbox is that, you know, the, they only kept the, the original system on the market for four years and really quickly jumped to the 360. And even though the 360 had a huge, you know, uh, red ring of death, you know, that cost them a ton. Of money. That was bad. That was bad news bears for them. The thing is, they gained a huge foothold they into, the, into the market share in the marketplace and, and just sort of like general brand awareness from that. So the thing was, at the end of their 10 year deal in, in, in 2011, they were looking, well, we're doing actually pretty good. You know, if we, 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 they actually were for the longest time beating the PS3, you know, overall, yeah. eventually it crawled back. Um, well, you know, they were, they were shocked because there was that big, I mean, there were several big articles about how shocked Microsoft was that the 360 did as well as it did. Like, I don't think they were planning to make money on the 360. They were still, doing that loss lead and they ended up gaining such a big foothold with the 360 that like they became successful which i think changed sort of the calculus that they did going into their next generation Mm -hmm. for the worse yeah well i mean again we're jumping ahead of ourselves here but i would honestly say um the things that made xbox 360 work was again leadership peter moore who was actually very good at his job and very good at making calls was running the 360 show during the 360 era. And he left to go work at EA, you know, and then the person who took over or was running Xbox leading into the Xbox one, Don Matrick is a complete utter fucking failure. The man, no one remembers the man. People like to forget, but that man, he, he didn't, he, he didn't just damage the brand. He fucking nuked it. Yeah. 
uh, <laughs> and and they still blame Phil for Matrix era. Right. And like, I don't, people don't grasp how badly Matrix fucked this. Yeah. How, how incredibly bad this thing. It wasn't just sort of like your brand you remembered sort of fizzled out. Like Sega fizzled out. Like people right. weren't like mad. Maybe some people were a little mad because they bought a Saturn and they didn't support it too great or whatever. But the Dreamcast came back strong and da da da. And Sega just sort of fizzled out because they ran out of money. He nuked the brand. He basically made he made the Xbox an anti like it was against you. Right. It did not personally like you. It did not personally care about you. Like it, it, it came in like I'm I'm trying to sell you a digital nanny. Right. Well, it, so what he what he did is something that uh, everyone is doing now. Uh, that every company, every tech company is doing now. He just did it 10 years early and he did it all at once. He thought ripping the Band-Aid off was going to be okay. Now we're all frogs in boiling water with the type of shit that they're doing. Um, you know, but at the time, nobody wanted a nanny machine. Now the nanny machine is God. Like the next consoles are all going to be nanny machines even more than they are now. Well, there's a there's a weird thing because like it's it's definitely creeped in, but it's not to the point of what he wanted. It's not. It's, no, we're it's true. Yeah, we're, we're still, still not, building. We're still not to the point where where you can't literally like physical media does still somewhat exist. It's not used a ton, but I mean, well, half of it, well, just under half is still physical media bought. So like thing is, if you own an Xbox Series X and you have a disc of a Series X game, granted, the disc does nothing really. You can give that disc to someone else and then that other person can then play the game. Right. He, that was something he wanted to take right away from from Xbox One. Yeah, you want to get you know, he and, wanted to get rid of it immediately. Yeah, and 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 we we so we still haven't gotten to that that dystopian level of like absolutely no ownership of anything we buy. We haven't gotten there yet. The other thing too is that he was forcing a connect on every bundle, you know. Right. Nobody wanted the damn thing. Um so like again, like he he nuked the brand. He's like I'm going to make you pay more for things you don't use, for things you don't want, you're not going to be able to do anything with yourself. You can't share your shit. You, he was a, he, this man nuked. And when his whole thing about like, well, what if I can't connect to the internet? And then we have a great system. It's called the 360. Like he, he basically told this in, in question about service members, you know, like, Oh, who might be in a submarine or they might be overseas or whatever. And he's like, well, we have a great, we have a great machine for them. It's called the Xbox 360. It's like, yeah, he was just he, he I don't know. He was a sociopath. Like he just like couldn't understand why people weren't on the program yeah, with So him. It, it not only was what they saying was he saying everything terrible. He gave Sony the opportunity to make that video. Here's how to share games with your with, for PlayStation 4. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I, like I, he made Sony look like your friend and he made you look like your enemy. Like it's not even just brand brand rot. It was brand destruction. It's it's a very interesting um it's a very interesting thing to being brought up because it, arguably that method would have been how to make certain peripherals actually have value. If Sony would have done like, oh, we're gonna do a, a loss lead on VR, but every PlayStation 5 is gonna come with a VR2 basic. Mm -hmm. Whether you want it or not, you get the headset. Yeah. Now, it would have been an insane loss lead, I admit. I'm not saying that it would have been, like, the most genius. But it would have forced adoption of VR and made VR games more likely to sell going forward. If you give people the option to spend money on a peripheral they don't want, they'll never get it. But if they have to get the peripheral anyway, mm -hmm. they are more likely to try those games. I still don't know how much that would have mattered for VR because VR is an inconvenient thing to to turn on, and I think that's still its biggest hur hurdle. But yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that it would solve all the problems. I'm just saying but that it sure it, would have done better. <laughs> you, you see, you see the line of thought where it's like, oh well, nobody wants to buy a Connect, so we'll have them have to have a Connect anyway, and then they're more likely to get the Connect games because what they wanted probably was like the facial recognition and all that stuff. Like you, you know that that's what they were doing with the yeah. Connect. You know, it's not even a secret. Um, you know, I don't know necessarily that sony ever would have pulled something off like that but i could totally see every company 
wanting to see if that would work, wanting to see if Microsoft could lost the lead and force this thing on you to make it a success. Yeah. And when it didn't, yes, Sony pivoted and was all like, oh, we're not going to do that. But I bet you the discussion behind the scenes of every major gaming corporation at the time was like, very interested to see how this goes uh because it's again it's another maximalist way to view things it's another way to maximize uh, maximize the amount of money available yeah you know uh it's just that don Matrick one uh had the charisma of a toad um you know did not did not sell this thing well at all but also the thing he was trying to sell was terrible um it's funny how he was using tv you know, TV and, 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 and NFL as like, this is the, this is why this is so important. This is why but it's so good. Consoles today are the, are the number one platform for streaming. Like he but was he wasn't like, even talking he was... about, he wasn't talking about streaming though. He's not, it wasn't streaming. It was not Netflix. It was not, you know, uh theoretical Disney plus he was talking about TV because I could bring up the video of the TV, TV, oh, TV, oh. TV, TV. He oh, was yeah. talking about network television Yes. The thing only boomers watch nowadays. And that was supposed to be the main selling. That is where he put his first foot forward on a brand new console before showing the games. Was because how he television network was going to be so intrinsic to a video game console. They were so clearly pushing to be the all-in-one media box, like a, a cable box. Right. That the, hence the name Xbox One, one box. Yeah. Um they so clearly wanted that. And I think he was, that mission is exactly where all consoles are going. It's just that TV as a, conce oh, as a concept is dead. The thing is, it didn't even go into a box. It went into the TV. It literally yeah, it became just part of the TVs. Because now you can, I have it on, I, I have, I have a, a smart TV. And I can, I have things where like you could play like Luna, you know, Amazon Luna stuff. Yep. You could, yeah, you yeah. can, you can sync a controller to play Xbox games on well, the TV like, itself. You're using streaming tech, but like it just went into the TV. Right. And if if they would have cornered that market and everyone would have bought their thing to be the all in one, like TVs might not have gone that way. Like we might not have gotten smart TVs necessarily. Like it, it is it's a weird thing to think about. I don't know if he would have been able to convince like Samsung and LG and whatever to, to not put that into their TVs. Oh, it, I'm not saying he would have been convinced. I'm saying like if if the Xbox One would have been a success in the way he clearly wanted, because he was he was trying to make it not just a gaming thing. He was trying to make it like you're a boomer and you love TV, but you want to have like access to streaming and mm -hmm. and some games, or like oh you have a family but you want to have TV and they want to have uh, their gaming console all in one. He was trying to build this all in one family unit thing. You know, he was trying to like. He was trying to eat several other markets lunch at once. Yeah. And it was a joke. It was a bad move. Now, you know, like Zoomers, I know for a fact from at least like friends of mine, love that idea. Straight up love the idea of it it it, 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 mer it, it merges into it eventually. Um, it's just weird when you're trying to sell like I have this device right. that does things your phone and your TV can absolutely already do you know it, it, it's like trying to sell ice to a penguin in this weird sort of way <laughs> like rather than make it like a you like a unique box top thing it just it just eventually wormed its way into the devices you already had right or already would would be buying like phones and TVs so his right. folly was that he was trying to basically sell a separate box top thing that was the, the future was going to be that stuff. All that, all that stuff it could do would eventually worm its way into the TV itself, worm its way into your phone itself. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't it, it, making a box top for it would became sort of unnecessary. Um, and 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 again, you can't t you can't see that you know ahead of time. Obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty or whatever. But like the the sort of like do it all now in this one box in the way it nuked the brand. But before, but getting 
that's all kind of like future now that's 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 the now we're living in where like where people and i've seen you know i've heard the argument about like how like well you know shouldn't they have turned it around by now i mean sure i mean that would be what would be great but i mean phil said that very perfectly people built their digital libraries on the ps4 right they lost that generation hard because of matrix follies and people just put all their games on the we're still in cross gen there's still most games come out on both ps5 so, is very clearly riding the coattails of ps4 yeah, like most people would still are, are still if they bought a game on on ps4 they're probably going to buy the sequel on ps5 mm-hmm. or 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 if they're going to update you know if it's like if it's like fortnite it's like where did they download it on their playstation 4 where are they going to continuously update you know the game on their playstation 4 or on their play, playstation 5 they're not going to they're not going to switch things you know and like log into a whole different account i mean uh, the biggest problem and i I really wish we didn't have to pay for for online gaming on xbox or playstation because i feel like that's really it's really outdated but whatever um that's also there it's like that's the thing though it's like honestly honestly it's actually probably hurting microsoft more than helping it uh in, in a weird sort of way because the thing is, is like, yeah, I downloaded Fortnite on my PS4. Why would I get an Xbox Series S or X? Why would I switch platforms back to the other one? Because then I got to cancel my PlayStation account. And then I got to resubscribe to a whole different setup and system right. and find a new name. I'm like, the fact that you made it like paid to play online between both these systems, that's why people get locked into these ecosystems when you have to pay for okay. them. Because right. the thing is, is like during, during, playstation 2 they didn't charge playstation 3 sony didn't charge and they got super uber hacked but like they didn't charge for online gaming back on ps2 and ps3 and xbox always did so if you were in that ecosystem you kind of were like oh i'm already here i might as well stay here and again because xbox 360 came out first and was was first to the block and people were buying it and then jumping in especially for games like halo 3 eventually and stuff like that they already were paying now they could buy a playstation and not pay online which is great but whatever but felt if you kind of get this feeling of like well i'm already paying for stuff here i might as well take advantage of it and the quality of online for the service you're paying for was right and that's the other thing too is that 360s online was significantly better than playstation 3 right. par- party chat alone um which just so, isn't true nowadays yeah well now we don't even use it but You're right but like when sony started charging for online on ps4 then you know that's where that's where i think like okay now you're gonna basically now you're gonna make a choice yeah and 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 microsoft nuked to their brand identity hard and basically that choice became playstation for oh. a lot of people and that's the hole they're still digging themselves out of and i i think it, throwing all that aside because yeah it's in a future that doesn't exist now uh i think if i if xbox never exists i think there's a better chance of yes the gamecube not failing quite as hard but true sega surviving as a console maker squeaking by at least one more generation dreamcast because here's something that i think you would have gotten a new controller for dreamcast like a new controller would have come out um or oddly enough gamecube would have been a preferable shooter console Mm. to the dreamcast because it had the c stick which was a weird position necessarily but it was dual analog right um you know i part of me is like i think the most obvious thing is people be like oh halo wouldn't have been a juggernaut and i don't think that's true actually because bungie was already making games they were making it for fucking macintosh yeah they're Uh, making halo for mac right and so it's like halo still would have come out would it have been a hit if it only came out on apple no i i don't think bungie is the juggernaut it is today i don't think yeah i don't think you have any of those other follow-on you know uh i i i I think odst which is the best uh <laughs> i honestly think console first person shooters stall a little bit you know with without the xbox not like they they don't they don't cease to be successful it's that everyone kind of waits for perfect dark zero is what happens with with no halo you which also is, don't get call of duty 4 by the way 
because you wouldn't get nearly as many World War II shooters. And so there wouldn't be like you, you, what was the Hill 30? What was, uh, Road to Hill 30 or Road Road to Hill 30? Brothers in Arms. Yeah, it was Brothers in Arms. Uh, was like a box game. (laughs) It was toward the end of that World War II fatigue. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a great game, but Call of Duty pivoted because so many World War II shooters were coming out and were doing, bonkers on everything but like xbox did make shooters like huge yeah Um, well that's the weird thing is because medal of honor kicked off the world war ii mm -hmm. like you know fascination which which lasted all the way to the law through the launch of the xbox 360 right because they died with a modern they died they did medal of honor died after they did a modern war game right yeah. So, I mean, like, World War II shooters were the thing until 2007, from literally, like, 99 to 2007. It was, it was ridiculous. Yeah, one of the, one of the digs on Call of Duty 4 at the time in 2007 was that, like, oh, they're, it's not World War II. Like, people were unsure if it was going to be. I remember a lot of people were just super happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, absolutely. But there was like, there was a good amount of commentary about like, oh, addition about like, yeah, they're deviating from the winning, yeah. You know, but so they were right. If we go back in time to two thousand and one, um, or the year two thousand, when uh, Xbox was heavily, you know, it was in the discussion because the thing is, I have e- I probably have an EGM issue here where they talk about um, Xbox P. Pre PS2 is not out yet. Dreamcast, Dolphin, Xbox, PS2. And they go over the sort of pros and cons of all the rumored, you know, specs of all the this stuff. This was even before this was even before Space Roll 2000. So like the Xbox was known. It was known it was coming for some time. Mm-hmm. People knew it was happening. It was it was it was no secret that Microsoft was was getting in the game. It was no secret Microsoft was getting in before the Dreamcast was dead, which is why there was even an option at some point where they even reached their hand out and said, do you want us to make it backwards compatible with Dreamcast? Sega gonna Sega, though. Uh, which, well, yeah. I don't know how much that would have... If anything, it might have helped it a little bit in Japan, but like Microsoft really fumbled the launch of, of Xbox original in japan and 360 and and i and i read a really fascinating article on why this was and it was because microsoft tried to just like bully their way into you know the 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 marketplace like just sort of like bull rush right and they're like there are very successful american brands in japan they did it by by slowly grassrooting their way in and Starbucks was a big example. And, Interesting. And McDonald's, where it was like, they didn't come in and say, we're the biggest fucking thing in the world. You're going to love us. Eat our fries, bitch. <laughs> um. <laughs> Eat our fries, bitch. <laughs> so they came in and just sort of like, hey, here's a pop-up, like a little pop-up store. And then like, you know, oh, yeah, it's at this thing. It's kind of got this allure, this mystery, this foreigns you know foreign you know people love this shit and and so oh, like you they, chicken you, you ever had fried chicken you ever fried chicken? from kentucky you ever exactly ksc is huge in japan huge yeah and they and they weaved their way into being it and microsoft was just kind of like you know we're doing you the Americans are here hiroshima too motherfuckers and like xbox. Uh, yeah it, the xbox itself was like built uh, the whole marketing brand behind it was like that uh surge you know yes. like that extreme like was huge in the late 90s in the u.s like i guess early 2000s it was also yeah. but like you yes. know what i'm talking about like oh yeah absolutely uh, surge is the perfect the word <laughs> right like the energy drink the everything the the whole mindset behind that marketing mentality and then it went the exact opposite direction that all the japanese consoles were doing all japanese consoles were getting smaller and more like sleek Slimmer. looking yeah, yeah. And then here comes the Xbox, and it's like the biggest briefcase power bottom you've ever seen. <laughs> like it's it's massive. <laughs> like there's no way in Japan. Like if, if you've seen a Japanese apartment, you know that like space is a big deal. It's why oh, that PC thing would gaming, take up half the apartment. <laughs> right. PC gaming is is having a hard time, or was having a hard time because like 
but laptops are big, <laughs> you know? Um, I, this thing was so huge. You, you had to like, you had to figure out a whole new entertainment system yeah. to set your, t- your TV could sit on top of this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, or there was like, I, I don't remember if this was in Japan or if this was in Europe. I remember seeing it was a, it was a chair that the, the entertainments of the Xbox sat under you in the chair. Like and and then like it was connected to like there was like surround sound built into the chair. But the <laughs> Xbox sat in the chair so that there was a big fan that would blow through the underneath of the chair. Like it was this crazy looking leather. Do you do you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember what vaguely, I'm vaguely? I think I know you're I do vaguely think I know it, you're it wasn't like the X Rocker or some of like that, but it's like what those were kind of aping. They mm-hmm. were kind of like I just remember seeing this like full at it looked like a massage chair like where are they gonna <laughs> where's a japanese person gonna put that big fucker <laughs> like uh i mean we when we got one when xbox was old i had to rearrange my entire bedroom to figure out a place that it could fit because like it couldn't sit on my computer desk because i had no space it was like one of those corner desks I mean, yeah. it couldn't sit like under my crt like there was no like none of the none of the shelving under it was thick enough for it to sit. So it's like I I literally had to like take everything off of a bookshelf and switch everything around. And then like at the end of the day, you remember those like they were big in the 80s and every den. It was like a TV cabinet that had like big wide shelves all around the TV. Yeah. So you could put the TV anywhere. you. The only place I could put, fit the TV and the x were on the bottom. So I had to sit on the floor between my bed and the wall and play like right up against like that's how i could fit the whole fucking thing like i mean that thing was huge dude uh, it's like like bigger it was obnox- obnoxiously yeah big. uh although it was the first system to have a built-in hard drive which was right i remember thinking that yeah. was very cool at the time uh i mean it was cool it was forward thinking in a way but but yeah so Everything I've read is how Microsoft's strategy for Japan was just the wrong thing to do. Everything was wrong. Just selling this, like you said, the size alone would be the problem, but like just how they tried to market it did not how you market in Japan. So if they had gone ahead with Sega, like, hey, make it backwards compatible with Dreamcast. Maybe. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Guy, you also got to remember Dreamcast was, Dreamcast was more popular in America than it was in Japan. Well, Sega generally was for most of its life, wasn't Except it? Except for Saturn. Except oh, yeah, yeah, Saturn. The lone like... exception is the Saturn. Um, but Genesis and Dreamcast, much yeah. bigger. Master System was much bigger in South America and Europe um, than it was in Japan or U.S. So <laughs> Sega's, Sega's such a funny company because they're so fucking dumb. <laughs> because... They 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 can't stand the fact that they made something that's successful somewhere else, but not in Japan. Yeah, but not in Japan. So they will do all kinds of all kinds of shenanigans to to that, that spite their you know cut their nose to spite their face, you know because their home like the, the, where they made it doesn't like it as much as everywhere else. And I'm just kind of thinking in my head, I'm just kind of thinking how how fucking bad at business are you? If I made a well, product made a product and all of a sudden it blew up and say like say like the entirety of south america loved something like a movie or a thing i did or made or whatever i'd be like cool awesome let's like so since they're my since they're like you know since they love this and they want more of it let's give it to them what does south america want my entire focus would just from that point on would be like all right well make sure they're happy first and then I'll see what I can do, you know, to to, to sort of change my fortune. But I'm not going to sit there and be like, you know, oh, I don't, I don't want America to be number one. I want to be. Oh my god, like, it, it is weird. I I don't know enough about Japanese culture to make too much of a comment on it, but it does seem indicative of like 80s, 90s Japan. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, people in the know they said like the president of Sega would basically berate everyone in like all the business people in japan like all the time constantly almost daily about how poorly they the genesis was performing in japan compared right. to what americans were doing and they basically like took it out on the americans which is w- <laughs> so so odd 
you I, I don't know um but there is a decent chance that if the xbox didn't exist maybe the dreamcast squeaks along for one more because the dreamcast didn't it didn't do well enough necessarily to uh to float sega for several generations and that Peter Moore basically was saying, he was like, look, I looked at the numbers and we were doing great in America. But the thing is, is like company was bleeding. You know, they were, you yeah. know, we were bleeding everywhere. It wasn't really hit, taking off in Japan. So it's like Peter Moore actually made the call to say like, you know, I, I know I'm, you know, it's like even, even the guy who's like my department's doing the best. We need to shut it down because we don't have the money kind of thing. Right. Um, I, I, I think, I think it, it, a future for for no Xbox where Dreamcast maybe survives a little bit longer. Here's how I think that happens. They, micro, Sega, this is going into like Sega instead of Microsoft, but like Sega maybe could cut a deal. And this is how they would have worked. They needed to cut a deal fast, like in early 2001. Cut a deal with a DVD manufacturer. Launch a new version of the Dreamcast with a new controller with dual analog sticks and it can play DVDs. Mm -hmm. Sell it cheaper than the PS2. Yeah. If they did that, if they were able to cut a deal somehow and, and went that way, like, say the deal was with Microsoft somehow, like, maybe Microsoft didn't want to get its toe into the full console gaming, but like, okay, we'll, we'll fund, you know, a little bit more into the Dreamcast, you know, because they're already using Windows CE operating systems for, for, you know, the Dreamcast itself. Then I think Dreamcast lasts a little longer. In fact, I think Dreamcast maybe even lasts a couple years longer. Dreamcast maybe even gets to, to, to five years, maybe, maybe, maybe four, four, at least four. But if, if in 2001, Sega cut a deal to, to start making DVD compatible Dreamcast, like you buy a, like you buy a Dreamcast, you know, plus or whatever, right? The, the games are not different. The hardware is not different, but it plays DVDs has a different controller and they start selling these anything be better than that fucking dreamcast controllers <laughs> any dual analog controller like say they they do that i think it hangs on a little bit longer like it's it's maybe maybe kind of able to do that i would have been ecstatic i hate the playstation yeah. i hated the playstation 2 for many years i mean it, it's the most successful system of all time and everyone's entire childhood is is wrapped around that box but I remember the anger. I remember the death threats, you know, from angry customers because their system broke like it was my fault. Like, you know, mm. I I just have nothing but disdain for that miserable pile of of, of computer parts of a, of a system. It was, I mean, like, and the thing is, by the end of 2001, it was actually a great system because, oh, yeah. you know, Metal Gear 2, Devil May Cry, Eco, um, you know, all, all Jack and Daxter 1, all that great stuff came out in two, late 2001. <laughs> For this, it had great games, it really did. But like, I would have been ecstatic if the Dreamcast could have hung around, you know, maybe just a wee bit longer. Because the thing is, I was, I was in really enjoying my time with Fantasy Star Online. Well, you know, they, in early two thousand one. If Xbox doesn't exist, Dreamcast had the best online. It, it did, and it was first. Like and it, they could have become that first online. Now, granted, I. I don't know if they would have been the first to have an online party game. You know, would Wacked have come out on? <laughs> would Wacked have come out on Dreamcast? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, what a major Woody spank tank. We never would have got it. <laughs> hey, Billy, you want a battery? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I will destroy you. Uh, well, I think it's like if, Google if, if, if they were a <laughs> good Whack. luck. We're... Yeah, that's a product of its time where where like one of the characters is is a cartoonishly big breasted woman that's naked all the time with sensor bar. She's lust. She's got to be like one of the guys is like sloth and he's a dude passed out in in his recliner and then there's like a what is it like envious bunny and it's Van, it's fantastic. It's very it? much a product of its time and it's crap. Um <laughs> How dare you? It's it is a it's terrible running crap. <laughs> yeah, all you if you really want the experience of whacked, uh, I mean it's uh, you guys should play. You guys should play it on uh, Yo VG sometime. Uh, oh, we did. It was awful. We oh, were never, terrible. We're never going back. But the only thing worth it is just watch. They it's got to be on YouTube. Just watch the commercials. Yeah, uh, the yeah. Uncle Uncle Ertz, Major Woody's 
uh, Spank Tank is a commercial, and then there's like various little commercials that Vantastic cuts to between oh, man. mini games for the commercial breaks, and they are <laughs> is very early 2000s. Um, but yeah, the baby whacked ends up on, but this, on Dreamcast. Well, this into conversation because you know maybe you guess hangs around, but like what's what yeah. happens to all these other games? And here's where it gets. I think this is the interesting part because. When Microsoft jumped in in 2001, they didn't really have they didn't have any first party studios. They went and they bought a bunch of people up. Mm -hmm. They've been doing they've still been doing. They bought a bunch of things. Halo again, Halo would have have existed, but it might have only ever been a Macintosh game and it would have come out and it would have gotten like a, a few headlines for, you know, a couple PC gaming outlets and then kind of drifted into obscurity completely. Right, cuz PC gaming was basically dead water for what the late 90s early 2000s like there was there was cool stuff but it didn't have the push that like consoles well had. and then and, it, and then we're talking strictly macintosh computers right it's a sliver of a sliver yeah yeah so halo even even if halo was as you know as good <laughs> as halo is a big part of halo's appeal became the 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 the, the camaraderie that came from multiplayer with four controllers right. halo halo when halo 2 came out that's when Halo, like Halo One, was a success, obviously, but like Halo Two is what made Halo what it is today. And I don't think you get Halo Two. You don't get Halo Two without Halo One being the success it was. And no, the I, thing is, yeah. And I played Halo One uh, on at E3 2001, and it was a disaster. And everyone, you can look back at this; like it, it had a terrible showing at E3. Yeah, they really, they really made that game in the months between E3 and launch. For, for Halo 1. Like, yeah, it, the, it was not good. I remember seeing, uh, because again, I was a Sony fanboy, and uh, PSM Magazine had like a takedown of of Halo, like making fun of it, yeah, if I yeah. remember correctly. <laughs> and oh, yeah. It, it, was, it was a miserable game. Because the thing is, like, the most polished game for Xbox going into the launch was Munch's Odyssey. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. I for some reason in my head, Morrowind was a launch title. No, uh, Munch's when... Odyssey was actually their most well-known product going in. Hey, it's, a, it's this big get, and like, which is funny because I really feel like they should have pushed more for like Dead or Alive Three. That was that was a better showcase of the system's graphics capabilities than Munch's Odyssey. But well, there was a couple of good sports games. Actually, weren't they both snowboarding? It wasn't like SSX tricky was, eventually or something. And yeah, it was like amped or something. Like the sports games are where Xbox shined at first. Kind of. I mean, Halo was really where it shined. But yeah, because because my here's my memories of it are like I remember a game called Cell Damage uh, for original Xbox. It was, it was an EA right. game. There was like Twisted Metal, cartoony, Mad Mad Dash, like the racing, like the animals racing on foot. There was much as I was, and here's the thing: there was a bunch of other crap that Microsoft was actually publishing. Azuric, Rise of the Pantheon, you know the blue people, right. Night Nightcaster. Um, they had all these games. They 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 were going to publish a game called Malice, and then they dropped it, and some tiny public outlet picked it up. But um, they had this sort of just throw at, um, everything at the wall and see what sticks. Mm -hmm. And Halo wasn't even really expected to be the the game. They were kind of expecting Munch's Odyssey was going to be their big first party game. Well, because they still thought that they were they were mostly targeting kids, kids. Well, they and, were going for teens. Um, absolutely was like their primary audience was was definitely teens. Oh, see, I thought that Halo like Halo made them take off with older teens and college students, and that's why the next. I don't know, five or six years was like all targeted towards. It was teenage always boys, it was always teens. Kids. They were never, they never, not initially. They were never about kids initially. They bought rare with the idea that rare would, would, oh, that's going to fill our, our, we would body. never get nuts and bolts or actually right. we never would have gotten conquer live and reloaded. And I loved that. See, The thing is, is that here's the problem is that like rare would have been in a much better place even today. If Microsoft yes. never jumped in rare is in a, in, in a fine ish place now, but it took the leaving. It took Don Matrick getting booted and, and, and Phil kind of letting them do whatever they want, which was see if these to right. get rare back to where they are to today, because 
they were they were mishandled horrifically, like almost immediately from the well, buyout. They bought them because they were visionaries, and then told them no to every vision that they had. Yeah, and then like, it became like make make us make us because, and then I, I heard this firsthand from from ex rare developers. The biggest problem was they could they could prototype something, you know, with, with no graphics, whatever, you know, no textures, anything. They could prototype something to Nintendo and Nintendo would be like, awesome, cool. He said, every time Microsoft, we had to build a fully finished slice of a game before Microsoft would green light something. And then they would usually never green light anything. Ugh. Cause they couldn't, cause the people at Microsoft had no gameplay development experience. And so they, they couldn't, they could not visualize a video game without seeing it done. So just be like, why does it look so bad? And it's like, cause like, cause we haven't done the graphics yet. Like, why haven't you done the graphics yet? I'm not going to green light this. I was like, <sighs> like, so this, this was, this was the era of, of Xbox that ruined rare. You know, um, funny enough, uh, when Tech Bros started getting really involved in TV and film is when you started getting, like, super involved animatics, basically animated storyboards. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if something similar was going on there. But you'd think, <laughs> you'd think they would be good at visualizing prototypes based on... Because, like, animatics take quite a bit more time than regular storyboarding. Because mm -hmm. it's a regular storyboard that an editor then goes through and add yeah. frames to like animate and raw music or whatever yeah so it's like i wonder if that's just like a early 2000s and mid 2000s tech yeah. dudes just could not visualize <laughs> well there was the other problem too of that like they bought rare because they're like oh that's gonna fill up our kid market and like the only game rare had close to completion when they bought them was grabbed by the ghoulies Oh, that's right. So it, it was like, yeah, and we're working on Perfect Dark Zero. Right. We have Cameo, which is kind of, sort of, you could be, but it's kind of like supposed to be a sort of like tweens, not so much kitty, but like somewhere in between kid and teen. Um, you know, and 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 then and then Conquer was like, you know, the other thing they they decided to go with right away after that. So it was like right. It almost was like you, you, they bought Rare with the wrong idea in mind, which was that like Rare is going to make kid games for us. No, Rare did whatever it wanted because Rare actually still had 51% majority stake in their own company. Right. So when Rare wanted to go do Perfect Dark, they could go do Perfect Dark. When they wanted to do Conquer, they could go do Conquer. Nintendo couldn't tell them no, but they could tell them we're not going to publish it, which they didn't. Um, so because yeah. Rare self published Conquer is Bad Fur Day. Um, so it, it was just this, this thing where, where like, if we, if, if Microsoft doesn't jump in, that means a year later in 2002, they don't buy rare, which means rare probably, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say because rare's relationship with the Nintendo was kind of souring, um, because Nintendo was getting pissy that they, they gave them the earliest dev kits and they took a year to get Star Fox adventures out. You know, they were kind of expecting there to be them to be there at launch or close to launch, not way after. But right. I mean, again, though, like as we talked about in the last episode, that's a little bit on Nintendo for launching with Luigi's fucking mansion as your launch game. Which is Great game. I fine enough, a fine enough <laughs> game, but you don't launch with that. Um, <laughs> rough one to launch with, but great yeah. game otherwise. Yeah. So so yeah, we, we came to this point where okay, so, so Microsoft doesn't Halo doesn't take off. Halo doesn't become a juggernaut. A juggernaut. And and Halo, well, Halo's not I don't know what Halo is now either. So I mean Halo is pain. Um it's, uh, if you're a fan of it. It's Goliath uh in the fight with David. <laughs> it's just limping around, can't see, dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a limping, dying Goliath at this point. Bring back bring back ODST, man. Give me some humans fighting impossible odds. You just mean a new me game, game, not not just ODSTs. I mean, that got added to Master Chief Collection, but um, yeah, I mean, a new ODST game. Yeah, and right. So, oh, Hell Divers, I guess it's just the new. Here's the thing: is like without Halo, Microsoft Xbox doesn't become a success. But we're not even talking about if Halo didn't exist, because I, I mean, I would make the argument the Xbox doesn't take off. Period. Without Halo. Um, yeah. Halo carried that system hard for the first two years of its four-year life. And then the yeah. hype of Halo 2 
kept it going and, and eventually releases like GTA and the online on like them jumping in online and then getting GTA and stuff like that helped it. But like without Halo, I don't know where Microsoft Xbox is at all. But we're talking about Microsoft just looks at the proposal and says, nah, doesn't make an Xbox. Period. Yeah. I here's here's now here's a crazy thing. Here's where I'm, I'm I kind of want to get into like sort of like hyperbole a bit here. Online I think, gaming doesn't happen. Not not online gaming, not so much, but that could ha- that could have taken a big hit. Honestly, I think Western gaming doesn't have as anywhere near the resurgence it did. Really, you don't think you don't think it's as dominant today as it would have been, or I as it is? I, I think Western gaming really mm. takes a big hit um because it really i mean in in this really kind of depends on what happens because we're talking about western gaming really like, got its got its real foothold during the xbox era um but then it mm. really took off i think during the 360 era and i think if yeah. we if we remove xbox from this equation one elder scrolls never comes to console so millions of people never experienced Morrowind or Oblivion um, right then and there. Like that, that, that doesn't, doesn't happen. Yeah. I think first person shooters on consoles gets either, either delayed, you know, the popularity there now, or, or, you know, maybe just goes a different way altogether because without Halo, again, Halo, go, Halo stays a Macintosh only game comes out, makes us a few waves in the Macintosh gaming community, and then just sort of like disappears. Um, right. Yeah. I, I, Half-Life 2, still Half-Life 2 does its thing. Doom 3 still does its thing. So first-person gaming is still absolutely fine on PC. But I think console gaming first-person shooters, it, it, they get delayed a little bit. Like they don't, they don't blow up as hard as they were going to. They still right. happen, and they still make them. But like everything sort of becomes like a waiting game for Perfect Dark Zero. Um, the one interesting thing is that and there is a dark future here, not a dark future, uh, an interesting future here that you probably would have been way more happy with. If Xbox didn't happen at all, I think Time Splitters 2 becomes a major success. You think so? See, I way, think- way bigger, way, way bigger. Than it was because people like Time Splitters. Anyone who played Time Splitters 2 likes Time Splitters 2. But you remove Halo from that equation because Time Splitters 1 came out at launch of PS1. Right. So it's not like Time Splitters 2 wouldn't have gotten made without Halo. Time Splitters 1 was made just before Halo came out. With, yeah. It competed with Halo. Time Splitters 2 possibly becomes the de facto console first person gaming experience. Interesting. That's where I think what happens, just knowing it, like thinking about the timeline of events and stuff. Because I think Time Splitters 2 absolutely was still going to get made no matter what. Halo had no effect on that. But Time Splitters 2 becomes the new, new, real big hotness. And, and Time Splitters 2's only competition becomes Rare's Perfect Dark Zero. But Time Splitters 2's on GameCube and, and PS2. So right. I think Time Splitters 2 becomes the, the biggest, you know, uh, console first person shooter and then we it depends on if call i still think call of duty might actually still follow its trajectory because call of duty originally people don't know this was call of duty was x medal of honor devs the Mm -hmm. medal of honor allied assault devs left ea make call of duty call of duty was originally supposed to be a a slight strategy first person shooter where you would command you would tell your squad where to go that would that that got dropped so long ago people don't know this Call of Duty was a slightly real-time strategy first-person shooter where you would make commands to your squad mates and stuff. Um, but again, I think Call of Duty follows the same path where they leave EA because they get they you know there's there's bad blood there. They make Call of Duty. Call mm-hmm. of Duty follows its same path, and then eventually we do get to COD Four, and I think COD Four still happens. I think maybe actually that's actually questionable because. Infinity Ward made a big deal with Microsoft to be to get early dev kits to make Call of Duty 2 on the launch of the Xbox 360. Right. So without that, it's hard to say where does Infinity Ward play into this whole thing. If say there was no Xbox 360, 
there was only PS3 um, and Wii. I don't know how that uh, how that changes the trajectory of Call. I do think we eventually eventually get to Modern Warfare. I do think Infinity Ward would eventually want to get there, but maybe it doesn't happen right away. Maybe it takes another year or something. Well, because I don't think online gaming, like online multiplayer, takes off the way it did because Microsoft pushed pushed it and used Halo Two was the big thing. You're right there. I think online gaming maybe suffers. A huge uh, setback because yeah, Japanese companies, from my understanding, all really didn't want it, didn't want to yeah. do it, didn't want to support it, didn't want to put any money into it. Uh, from my understanding, Japanese companies didn't like LAN party either. Well, like, they didn't like that very much. Like LAN mm-hmm. connections was like tolerated but not loved. Korea was big on LAN parties yeah. and online gaming and stuff like that, but like it was really Microsoft in the console world that was pushing, mm-hmm. you know, online multiplayer. Interestingly, SOCOM may or may not have actually taken off even harder than it did. Because, yeah, right. Of, Cause it had online multiplayer, and right? It was like the online multiplayer for a long time. But you have to wonder how much push Sony was going to put into SOCOM. If there was no halo, because everyone right. wanted to out Halo Halo, even if it wasn't a Space Marine shooter. The, everyone was trying to like get the guy. I still think SOCOM probably still would have come out, and I, I think it probably still would have been a success. But I, I think we're looking yeah. at a, a but that's a third person shooter and, and a really tactical one at that. Um, but yeah, I think you're also right where it's like online doesn't without Xbox, online doesn't get the push because like Microsoft was really pushing for that. Right. really hard because like sega was the first one to be like online gaming is the future and and they were right 100 percent. and microsoft believed in that wholeheartedly sony was like yeah it's the future we'll have an add-on and nintendo was like i don't want a broadband adapter right. for my console <laughs> well it, you know this is a weird I, I don't know how off the wall this is but it actually i can see the logic in it online gaming and youtube are the two reasons that like high speed internet high speed started becoming ubiquitous mm. in America or in the United States rather because social media was we were spending way more time online yeah. but like forums and and social media at that point didn't really require bandwidth like it does today and it's sort of weird to think about 2006 2007 where you don't have Microsoft pushing online multiplayer and you mm-hmm. don't have YouTube taking off necessarily because there isn't the infrastructure in online. Yeah. Like there aren't enough people buying broadband for both gaming and mm. YouTube. Does the internet, get, does the internet itself get a setback? Yeah. I don't think it's like, Oh, it never happens, but uh, does it set back how fast broadband internet because you remember when 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 xbone or xbox original had online gaming like if you weren't in a major city you were not getting fast enough right yeah 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 um you know even even if you were in a suburb of a major esls you needed to be near a hub right and it's like gaming pushed more people to push for more consistent access to mm-hmm. internet like that's a weird and that's a weird thing because microsoft was the one pushing internet the hardest sony yeah. was like we're definitely gonna have it we're in the, we're in on it but um you know yeah we'll be there don't worry and nintendo was like no yeah, so i don't wanna if you remove gaming's biggest proponent for online gaming with no original xbox slows it way down right i think it slows it down i think it's i think it also massively slows down um western gaming you know in general uh because the thing is is that it's not it's not easy to deal necessarily with japanese publishers so say you're making a game right um and 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 it's like okay well we want like we want we want to make this game we want to publish it here or whatever even even though sony and nintendo obviously have american offices or whatever they're still headquartered in japan stuff like that where microsoft is here right here it's like i'm talking you know you can talk directly to you know some dude in in seattle 
right away with like you know bringing a game you know forward or whatever right um like i i i i just for me i'm like okay so bethesda never really gets into console gaming because of you know if with xbox not being there to push for it right right and and activision and ea are kind of doing their thing with their sports games for a while right and activision and ea are probably still activision ea for the most part but that's that's sort of like a closed circuit or whatever does there. LucasArts survive longer in this world? Does what survive longer? LucasArts, because LucasArts uh, is on like N sixty four, and LucasArts survived as long as it did because it was a tax write off. Um, <laughs> Touche. So yeah, I mean, I don't know if that actually changes much, but again, you start seeing. And here's the the other weird thing I think you would you would honestly kind of see is is um, you would actually see a lot less indies. Because if we say there's no Xbox original, that means they don't get in on the 360. Do you remember how there used to be like almost like a, like a, that wasn't ID at Xbox, but it was like Xbox at home or whatever. They had a, they had a section of Xbox 360 where you could download like stick figure games, like real homebrew stuff. Yeah. There was a whole homebrew channel and then there was Xbox live arcade. Which there was, there's no, there's no indie games or arcade games or down. There's no real downloading games much at all during the PS2 Xbox. I mean, Xbox could do it because it had a hard drive, which PlayStation 2 didn't natively. You had to buy one and install it, and then you we all know the peripheral vastly limits your potential sales there. But yeah. Xbox 360 comes out, and they had the dumb version, the arcade version um, that didn't come with a hard drive, which I bought because I was poor. <laughs> but I got a hard drive eventually anyways. Um, but remember, like... The 20 gigabyte hard drive? Yes. So, <laughs> But you got 13 gigs out of? <laughs> right. So when you really think about it, though, indie gaming really had a, got a lot of its early foothold because of the 360. You know, Geometry Wars <laughs> and that whatever that hexagonal puzzle game that came with it was. And <laughs> Uno. <laughs> Yeah, the, stuff. so I think the I think the indie the indie game scene on consoles is is pushed back because Sony's never been that cool with indies. They say they are, but they're full of shit. If they you know if you think you know Sony's ever been really good to indies, huh. they haven't been. Uh, if if you want to even think about just like indies, uh, what Bioware is from 1995, but it, it isn't Bioware who did Kotor. Who yeah. Did, who, yeah. So Bioware does Kotor on in two thousand four, two thousand three, two thousand three, three, three or four. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. two in two thousand five, and both of those are on Xbox, and eventually go to PC, but they're from Xbox. Does Bioware survive? Because Bioware make that's that's the other thing. Because like, yeah, Kotor doesn't come out on PC. It was going to. I'm sorry, it doesn't come out on Xbox. Uh, Kotor Two is Obsidian, but it's only made because of because Code they one were, yeah because of one and because uh, Bioware was making Jade Empire, which was only on Xbox if I remember right right for the longest time, and and Kotor, I think it still comes out on PC, but it doesn't do anywhere near as much. I mean, it it got its notoriety because of console gaming, like so it might have gotten a second one eventually, but probably not. I don't think Kotor is anywhere near the success it was without the original Xbox. Right. That's the same with Mass Effect because Microsoft right. published Mass Effect One. Yep, and it was the success of that that made EA buy Bioware. But they don't even get to that point if Microsoft never enters the arena. No Jade Empire, no Mass Effect One. Very, it's hard to know, it's hard to say if LucasArts would have even funded Kotor originally if it was only going to be on pc you know there's a there's another timeline that we haven't even touched by the way uh where i'm like i sort of think okay so xbox never becomes a thing sega dreamcast limps long enough to get a second one peter moore stays with sega Hmm. does the console after Sega Dreamcast end up a success or does Peter Moore fall into obscurity and not make anything? So like do either does Peter Moore make the next 
Sega console, the 360 in this timeline. Right. Does he like Mark Cerny this and like basically yeah. save them from themselves? Or does Peter Moore get nothing and ends up in obscurity? And I think he would have just gone to EA quicker <laughs> and just retire, basically, because after he gets to EA, what is Peter Moore really like? What What was his baby after he goes to EA? Like he just baseball games <laughs> like sports games. Yeah. He, 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 then, then he went and became manager for Liverpool football like club. Yeah, just lives his dream. He's fine. He's happy. But like, he doesn't necessarily hit that greatness that he uh, that he right. affected with 360. <sighs> so part of me is like, oh, is there a timeline where like Sega Dreamcast 2 or whatever they, they end up calling it, like, is the 360 in this timeline where they I still think that and we didn't talk about this necessarily, but we we probably should have mentioned in some in some episode the timeline of the Sega PlayStation. Yes, because yeah. if the Sega PlayStation happened and it almost did, there was a meeting set for it. But again, I, I, as I as I the theme of the episode, Sega is the most hilariously dumb company on the planet. They're, they're um, just bad at what they do. You love them, but they're just bad. So Sega Japan turned down Sony and Sega of America's proposed meeting proposal to make a Sega PlayStation. If Sega PlayStation happens, that's a wild thing. I think Nintendo gets I think Nintendo gets a real big dildo shoved up its ass um, during the the N sixty four era. If it was Sega PlayStation, and they they survive right, they have the largest war chest. Period. Nintendo wouldn't wouldn't die, but I mean, like this is like maybe going into the but like they might have shrunk to like portables only for a while, <laughs> right? I, we might have gotten uh, well. The DS still happens. Like it would have been weird to think like we might have still ended up at the Switch. We just never would have gotten the Wii or the Wii U. <laughs> yeah, something like it would have been something weird like that. Like but how yeah, crazy like, would that be? Again, I I think though like for for what we're talking about here, I I think like the the most hyperbolic thing I can say is that like I think Western gaming doesn't get the foothold it did on 360 PS3 era. Bethesda never really gets into console gaming. Bioware either never takes off or never gets into console gaming. We don't get the PS4 in its uh, in how it dominated the way it did. We don't get like yeah, because PS3 becomes a bigger success be without the 360. Mark so Cerny gets ignored. <laughs> well, Mark Cerny gets, and we get stuck into this proprietary f fucking hellhole of Sony, you know, pr like in technology that only exists on their own systems and costs an arm and a leg. We don't, so not only do we not get the PS4 as dominant as was, we don't get Sony shifting to Western AAA studios the way. Or oh, there's it did. plenty of chuds who'd be super happy about that, but it, sure. But like that means we don't get God of War, we don't get any of the Naughty Dog games the way that we got them, probably. Like, you probably don't get Horizon. We don't get Horizon. We don't, uh, we don't get. There's a decent there's a decent chance that CD Projekt Red never is what it is today. Hmm. Like it it might still exist, but like Western gaming in general does not have the boom time that it has because in the West, after you know the 80s crash, like nobody was talking about video games having a comeback. Yeah. And Microsoft entering the fray in the late 90s, early 2000s sort of solidified that like oh no this is an avenue yeah like if anything if anything like there was gravity yeah, exactly if anything microsoft just coming into the industry was probably more of like okay this is a thing if, well if microsoft's doing it you know right we, that's we gotta wild. be here too so i mean if you take them out of that equation it's it's actually a very different industry but i think i think we we just we go through a very different thing where Western gaming doesn't take off. And I don't think indies take off as much. They, they, indies still happen, and, but like it's it's kind of like it's PC regulate. It's really mostly PC stuff only. Um, they, it takes a lot longer for them to get noticed, to get, to get you, know, uh, you know, to become successful, stuff like that. So it, it's the thing is, is like for, for a lot of people who are just like, you know, Japanese gaming centric and hell, I'm kind of on, on that spec, you know, that spectrum myself a little bit. Yeah. I honestly think you if we take Xbox away from this, we're in a we're actually in a significantly worse industry. Like we, we really are. 
because we don't get Sony doesn't get humbled. Indies don't really take off. Online gaming, you know, isn't as as uh, it doesn't have the early successes as much as it should have. Um, certain games just don't get made, even Japanese games that Microsoft pays for, you right. know, 360 era. So, um, my my personal feeling on the issue is just kind of like for all the faults and, and weird things that have happened, you know, to Microsoft over the years and, and all the stumbles it's taken and all the dumb decisions it's made on its own, uh, we would be in a we would be in a worse off industry right now if not for, for Xbox happening. You know, whether that directly or indirectly, you know, affects the games you play right now, it would still because because I mean, like, because again, think of it this way too. Square Enix alone was saved hard by IDOS in the 360 PS3 era. Right. You know, when they needed the Deus Exes and the Tomb Raiders and the other games because they were they they were basically tr tripping over their own shoelaces coming into the HD era and how much of a, of a disaster all their their big projects in Japan were being and IDOS literally saved their their chestnuts kept them afloat. Like we'd be talking about like there there are some Japanese companies that would be in wildly different places now if there wasn't a western you know su you know support that there wasn't capcom. Such success capcom would be you know, yeah yeah, yeah it would be in a wildly different place i don't know there where i don't know where it would be honestly without it yeah. we, with the way in a food sports in stuff. general by the way would not be a thing like if microsoft pushed esports you know, so fighting games, you're in the FGC and you love how much the FGC has expanded and how many fighting games there are going. Around. That might not be a thing just because Xbox didn't push esports and online gaming the way that it has. Right. Because it's hard to say how much pre where we are now mm. going into PS3, early PS3 or, or, or late PS2, how much would Japan have really focused or pushed for online gaming and stuff like that it's really hard to say if they would have if arcades might have long lasted longer maybe maybe That's i don't it. know the problem they, with arcades is that like technology like you know outpaced them right they were already dying but they they would have continued to die but they would have maybe died slower but i i think with the death of arcades you might have gotten the death of like fighting games generally for a while because online gaming is kind of one of the major ways that has caused, I don't know if I'd call it like a renaissance of the fighting games, but that, an expansion of fighting games. I think the reality is, too, is that the thing is, I don't think a $600 ass PS3 without a 360 as competition, I, in PS3 would have sold a little more. It would have sold better, but it... it that six hundred dollars was that was, it, was steep. It, it didn't matter that it was Sony. There was a lot of yeah. people like no, no, I don't know about that. Not a chance. Um, yeah, not a chance. Because the thing is, it's like okay, so does Street Fighter Four still happen? Yeah, I think it does. I think Street Fighter Four still happens, but it doesn't sell anywhere near as many copies. And the the sort of fighting game you know renaissance of two thousand nine doesn't hit as hard. And you remember, and here's another thing: that a lot of people got like probably don't realize or don't remember is that. One of the big reasons Capcom was convinced to make Street Fighter 4 and Marvel 3 was because of the success of Mortal Kombat vs. DC. Because of NetherRealm games actually were doing really well. And without Xbox, they don't do that well. Like at all. So, might not have gotten a Blu-ray player in the PlayStation 3 either. There's a lot of things that happen that 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 Microsoft just being a competitor and 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 having a cheaper option and all these people like me at the time, you know, buying a cheap version of a 360 just so I could just so I could play COD 4 with with Andrew and all the other guys. Um that doesn't ha if that doesn't happen, there's a lot of things that just don't get bought, which means there's a lot of sales that just don't happen, which means companies were probably might have been a lot less likely to fund or green light a lot of projects that did happen as they did. So there's all there. It, it would actually, like you may not see it now and you may not like it, but we would be in a world of hurt in this industry. If not for Xbox being there and doing what it did, because everything has an effect. 
every you know you know every every ripple has a source you know so yeah. there's a lot of things that would go poorly for a lot of games you love that may you may not initially see the connections immediately to xbox and i'm sure we didn't even like begin to touch on all of them so that would be a good thing like in comments and uh or tweets or whatever uh what are some other like what are some butterfly effects of you know microsoft not existing that you see happen yeah i mean the biggest yeah. butterfly effect is first person shooters like the first first person shooters don't go away don't but live man yeah, they don't, they don't... like like can you imagine how much like stalled it might have been maybe time but the good they survive people... they just don't thrive like but again did. maybe there's a good future where time splitters 2 became the halo it deserved to be because time splitters 2 is better than halo 1 I would have, I would have done you well, definitely as a shooter, as humor and stuff too, definitely. But uh, <laughs> we don't have a book, we don't have a book series. Um, <laughs> but we do have uh, uh, producers to thank. Um, if you're interested in becoming a producer or a patron at any level, please check out patreon.com slash EO video games podcast. Dude of the week was Tyler F. Thank you, Tyler, so much. And our producers for this episode are Us Knight, Cyber Knight. Mutton Chops Johnson, The Pink Hammer, Screw Nami, Croy 35, Hyper Viper 89, Hockey Kong 64, LCL Mayhem, and Ziggy Z. Thank you, dudes. We'll catch you next time. Later, dudes.